small game processing series. This week we'll be talking about processing and cooking cottontail rabbits. Here in Florida we have two species. We have the eastern cottontail and we have the marsh cottontail rabbit. So we'll be going a little bit into habitat behavior, uh, a lot more on cooking and processing this time than we did in the last one. And uh, we hope you enjoy it. So what we're looking for in rabbit habitat, they really like uh, disturbed areas, um, human and wildlife interfaces, brush piles, old agricultural areas, orange groves here in Florida, um, any, anywhere stuff's piled up where they have a place to hide, easy cover, and can access open areas pretty quickly. Um, they're crepuscular, so they're most active during dusk and dawn. Um, and, and nighttime, so you very rarely see them during the day. They're usually holed up, back up underneath something. Uh, we also look for trails in the grass. You'll see a visible tunnel about rabbit height. Um, you can follow them through. We look for footprints in the mud, especially the marsh rabbits. They like the watery, muddy areas. They're known to swim. We're looking for any evidence of feces or droppings that we can see the age class size of rabbits um, over time they'll actually use the same area over the years so you'll get mounds of old decomposed droppings but it'll actually raise the elevations of some of these spots in the marsh so if you find a spot like that you can generally know that that habitat's been productive for quite a while and they'll actually, the marsh ra rabbits and males will actually compete over those areas of droppings. Um, so those are kind of some of the things we look for when we're hunting rabbits. Yeah, right here we have a, a really good travel path. The rabbits and other critters, you can see some rabbit tracks barely right there in the mud. There's sure sign of the rabbit right there. There's another hind foot. Um, so yeah, good area to set up and start looking for rabbits. As far as gear goes for the cottontail rabbit, a good pair of binoculars is extremely helpful. Um, typically they're going to be at a longer range when you see them. They like disturbed areas along roadsides. So it's good to get out there, open field, something that you can see a long ways. Blaze orange is important. Again, check your local regulations to see if it's required, but it's never a bad idea. Here in Florida on private land, rabbits are uh, huntable year round. So we have that advantage. Um, check your local laws and regulations for your area to make sure they're in season and you know your bag limit and possession limit. Um, other things I like to have, a game vest or some kind of backpack or a little pack to carry some water. Typically you're going to be walking quite a ways when you're looking for rabbits. Um, they do travel in groups, not travel in groups, they do live in groups. So when you see one, you're typically going to see more, um, but they're going to be of varying ages. So I kind of like to try to pick out the larger ones and leave the smaller ones for later. As far as weapons go, it's a lot like squirrel hunting. Um, as for archery, instead of using the fur catcher, I'll use either a field tip or a broadhead. Um, I really like my, again, single shot 410, but I've been known to use a 20 and 12 gauge as well. Shotguns, all great options, and then uh, a nice bolt action 22 rifle with a good scope on it because again a lot of times they're going to be at a longer range so that's helpful but when you're walking through the brush at a closer range um, the shotgun really helps so one of their biggest defense mechanisms is staying still and relying on their camouflage so a lot of times when you see them they won't run they'll stay still which will give you a really good shot opportunity all right, so Spencer showed you guys another skinning method. Um, before I do that, we're gonna go over the difference between a cottontail rabbit and a uh, marsh cottontail. So marsh cottontail, you can see, has a much, much smaller tail. Uh, the bottom of its feet are gonna be black from running around in the mud. Um, 
ears are going to be shorter. You can see this one's maybe been in a couple fights recently. Um, so yeah, now we're going to start skinning. And we're going to do a skinning method if you wanted to actually tan this hide out. So I'm just going to ring around the legs. I'm going to go ahead and pull up right above the anus carefully. Without any incisions into the cavity. Skin up. point the inside of the leg right up the sides eight first incision same thing on the other side Top. I like to come from the top down. So at this point, back to the bottom. You're addressing this in the field where it could possibly be dirty or muddy. This is a good way to keep the meat clean. It's kind of like it's laying on a rug. does happen, don't worry, just be real gentle. See a piece of shot. So 
go for this rabbit. I did use a single shot, 410, uh, number six. So, see the damage there. Hide, and now we can worry about that mistake we made earlier in the gut sack. So very carefully, I'm just going to go ahead and cut all the way up through the sternum. And get out anything usable. Heart. Liver, a couple of shots, but no spots for two anemia, so we're good there. So away from the meat, we'll the rest of that liver. See, I'm using gravity here. And if you can, try to use it to your advantage. Anytime you're cutting meat, especially large game, gravity is always going to help you break it apart some of the larger cuts. But you can also use it for the smaller game. So you want to reach up as far up there as you can. Make sure everything's cleaned out. Grab from the bottom. Peel back. Kidneys. So there would be the gut pile. And then lungs. Pull the esophagus out through. So there it is cleaned, and I do have a little bit of spot on the outside there, but we'll take that inside, rinse it off. Cut the rest of the legs off, take out any of the bloodshot meat, and uh, we'll get to cooking it. So deboating rabbit, um, it's a lot like any other animal. You got your front leg and your rear leg. So the front leg, you're gonna have your scapula. You're gonna come in and find the joint between your scapula. Cut right at that joint, break the tendons. Come in and scrape all the meat off the top of the scapula. Come underneath it. Feel for any fragments of bone. Lift your scapula out. Muscle. Then you can cut straight through that. So that you can see that split from shot. So we'll d discard anything unusable into the pile for scraps and stock. Anything usable will go into our other pile. And then for the rest of the bones, you'll just cut along either side and then come in underneath. The 
this is uh, useful if you're going to be mincing it, grinding it for sausage or chili. And these are uh, pretty small rabbits down here in Florida, so definitely takes a little practice, but you can get get your bones pretty clean. And then uh, same basic thing for the front shoulder. You're going to come up and feel. You can feel the H bone. So you cut around and underneath that. And then you feel where the femur joins. Cut right through that. And then just trace the bones. Straight down. And you can lift them right out. Same thing at the bottom. Cut right along the edge, the front and back. Cut the tendons. Come underneath. Just roll it. Lift it right out. Deboned rabbit. And take it anything like that off. And as far as the saddle goes, you can see that this one got a little shot up. An easy way to split something is just take a knife and use the weight of a rubber mallet. Cut right through your spine, equal parts. So then you come in and take and actually get in there, these tiny, tiny, tiny little loins, and actually debone them right down the rib line. Same thing for the hands. You can go down there and feel where the the joint comes in. And to pop that joint, this one's got a little damage from shots. So we'd be real careful not only with our hands in there, but our knife. You know, we want to get that in our meat. Trim that out later. So there's a nice small loin and the ham, which would make a good combination if you were to do a small appetizer plate. So when you're cooking, you want to make sure what the French call mise en place, everything in its place. So before you start cooking, think about what you need for the recipe, have it all laid out. So we got the rabbit cut up. We're going to start by heating up a cast iron pan. Then we're going to salt the rabbit, bring it up to room temperature, chop our vegetables so they're ready to go by the time the pan's hot, and then we're going to get that rabbit browned in the pan, have the vegetables ready to go deglaze them and get it braising and into the oven.
trick I like to use is to really get garlic good and smashed up. Sprinkle a little salt that'll act as an abrasive and use the edge of your knife and go and scrape with the edge of your knife and the salt combined with the garlic and the edge makes a nice puree pretty quick without having to chop it and get a nice even consistency. See, we have this cast iron pan at the smoke point right now with a little bit of canola oil and some rendered uh, pork lard. Salted all the pieces of meat. Uh, drying is a lot easier. High heat and you're browning the meat. If you overcrowd the pan, you're going to start steaming the meat. So if there's moisture on the outside of the meat, again, you're going to be steaming the meat. So a little bit of salt, going to pat all the surfaces dry. And not overcrowding my pan, I'm going to start laying pieces of very hot oil to brown. That to do it. Two batches, I will. So after the rabbit's nice and browned, you got a good, uh, nice fond on your pan. We're going to go ahead and add the aromatics, the onions, and the garlic. Always add the onions before the garlic unless you're really on top of it because garlic burns very, very quickly. So you're just gonna saute the onions until they're just translucent. It's gonna be about six to eight minutes. And I'm gonna reduce the heat just a little bit. At this point, the onions are translucent. We'll put the rabbit back in the pot. Along with all the liquid. And then I'm going to deglaze the pan with a little bit of Marsala wine. Maybe about a quarter cup. So you get that good stuff up off the bottom. And make sure you work all that up. Get that in there. And then as soon as that reduces, you can see it's almost gone. 
You can use any kind of stock. You can use water if you need to. We have some canned venison stock from last year. <laughs> so right about now you can see the bubbles are starting to look a little bit dry. Now that liquid's almost gone, so we hit it with the stock. Arrange our pieces so they cook nicely. The lid's gonna go on, and this is gonna go in a 225 degree oven. So right before the meat's just about to fall off the bone, we actually went and pulled it off the bone. And to make the gravy, we sauteed a little bit of shallots and some butter, strained out the braising liquid into the pan, and then re-added the pulled rabbit. So once that cooks down for a little bit, to Thicken up the braising liquid. We're going to add just a little bit of demi gloss. And stir that in. Let that reduce for a couple more minutes. So, any starch pairs well with this. We have smashed red potatoes. You could use sweet potatoes, rice, pasta, grains. The list goes on. For each plate, we're going to take a little bit of the rabbit out of the gravy. Salt and mashed potatoes. some sweet potato greens from the garden, slightly charred, we have one of our rabbit legs, Top with a couple green onions. And I, uh, for my greens, I like to make a uh, vinegar pepper sauce. So I'm just going to splash a little bit of that on those to finish it off. So, 
Over the past three weeks, we've gone over grilling, frying, sous vide, and now braising. Um, all these are different techniques you can use to apply towards a small game. They're pretty interchangeable, so if one is not working for you on a certain species, maybe you can try another one. Um, just be creative, and uh, remember, there's not one tried and true way to cook anything. Just use the different techniques that are out there. And Spencer's going to be back next week uh, with Waterfowl.